Everybody heard the same kind of radio. And what that produces is this type of shared space. Hello, my name is Gerard Byrne, and I'm an artist based in Dublin. Right here on KGBS. Radio KGW. 620 in Gerard, so good to have you here in Frankfurt in the restaurant Mosebach, the film. Yeah. How come um, the title In Our Time, I also looked up, there is a Ernest Hemingway um, history collection. Did it have any influence? No, <laughs> obviously not. That. <laughs> <laughs> it's good though. Uh, but it did come from somewhere. Um, so I made the work for the sculpture project in Münster in 2017. And I was reading about the... Um, the Anabaptists in Munster and I came across basically a really great radio program that was a discussion of the Anabaptists and it's from a series that BBC did for decades that was called In Our Time. But, uh, but I somehow held on to this phrase, In Our Time, because I was, I suppose, interested in the way in which it proposes a sense that we live in a shared time, which might sound like a banality, but actually I think it's actually a very contested uh, proposition. Minster is a, um, an exhibition about sculpture. Yeah. How does it feel, I mean, in that context? To, yeah, to, to show a video in a sculpture exhibition. I mean, I know normally you don't show your works as a painting, on yeah. as a moving painting or image on the yeah. wall. So I know there are installations, but yeah. still in this context, was it... Um, uh, I tend to structure works um, in a sort of sculptural way rather than in a kind of linear way. So I'm interested in things that loop. Yeah. I'm interested in things that, um, that sometimes play back differently, different times, that they don't necessarily have a, a continue, like a very consistent yeah. kind of playback structure. And I'm interested in the idea of sort of modularity. The work in our time, it's not set in a very specific moment, but generally it's set in a period that's somewhere between the mid 70s and the mid 80s. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I realized from looking, from listening to commercial radio from the 70s is that actually it's really schizophrenic, right? Personalities change from once between one song and the next. The guy goes, he's crazy at one point, and then he's really smooth the next time around. And it's really erratic. And that's actually to do with the nature of how radio works as a medium and the fact that listeners come and go at very arbitrary points. You know, you get in your car at 1.15 and you turn on the radio, and today it takes you nine minutes to get to the school to pick up your kid, so you listen to nine minutes of radio. Yeah, and you today. decided and actually. Tomorrow you might listen to seven and a half. The next day it might be 11, depending on the traffic lights. Yeah. So that actually gave me kind of license to make the character quite schizophrenic. Yeah and to put together things that in some ways are very different and very incongruous. That's a goodie. That's, uh, that's the marmalade and reflections on my life. It's 20 minutes past 10 on KBGS-FM, where you can stick Ron Lander in your ear every day from 1 to 4. You can put Bob Hudson under your arm between 6 and 10, if you have a portable radio, that is. It's based in this idea that there was a way in which the radio was much less differentiated. Everybody heard the same kind of radio. And that, what that produces is, is a type of communality, is this type of shared space, right? We listen to the same things, essentially. So we have a type of connectivity through that. And I think that that has actually more or less disappeared as a reality, increasingly disappeared as a reality. So now people listen to podcasts and they listen to stream this and they, they stream that and they listen to things from all over the world. And you have actually a much more fractious kind of cultural situation, actually. But what is not existing anymore is to talk. I mean, it's like... You have this moment that somebody is calling in the radio and he's talking with them. Yeah. But in the end, I mean, today in radio, it's possibly still on. But I had the impression that nowadays, if you say in our time, 
this is not really existing. Actually. Yeah, and, and actually I'm thinking a lot about the gallery space as a kind of communal space. Where people come together and see it. As a space where it. people come together to, see, to look yeah. at things. Yeah. That becomes a type of reference point, oh. right? And in that sense, it produces a kind of communality of sorts, right? Which otherwise actually, you know, what would you have otherwise, right? Otherwise it's quite, it could be quite dispersed and quite fractious and, and reliant on, I don't know, like art magazines or I don't know what you would rely on to cohere like a kind of artistic, a sense of an artistic moment, right? When you see the film, there's so many layers. I mean, there's yeah. the one layer of the music, there's yeah. the one layer of this person, the moderator, and so many detail, details from, mm -hmm. the, from the tapes up to the yeah. mug he's drinking yeah, out, yeah. his coffee. Yeah. And then you hear, hear the jingles of yeah. the, um, how do you say, the advertising. Yeah. So I was wondering, does this all exist in your head? If I try to add it up, I have probably about six or seven people that I work very regularly with on projects. Uh, some of them work on lots of different things with me, but I have somebody who, for example, did research on old like commercial radio from the 70s for me. You know, I have conversations with her about what I was looking for and she tell me what what could be found and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. And so that's one type of development. And and what that what that produced in a way was uh, a little archive of, of commercial radio recordings that I was interested in. Uh, and then what we did actually in practice was that we transcribed the recordings um, and then the transcriptions then became the basis of a script. I mean, I was eager to get it in order to find out you don't get the film mm. because um, you don't really get what is going on in this radio and in the end you just find out and this is not the point of it. It's actually edited in a very unorthodox way because parts of it, it's a bit like a wallpaper pattern. Parts of it loop yeah. and, you know, time and again. Mm -hmm. And parts of it change continuously during the day. So the music is different all during the day. And the time, when he says the time, yeah. it of course stays in sync with real time in the, in the gallery space. Yeah. And, and so obviously there's some cleverness in yeah. terms of how it's put together as a work that allows that to be possible. In baseball today, the Giants and A's both lost. The A's to Kansas City, eight to seven. The Giants to the Dodgers by a score of five to three out of candlestick. That's the latest from KGW. First person news. With the work, I was interested in for example, in, the, in the, the selection of music as a kind of chronology, as a, as a weird type of history writing, right? Through like playlists, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think that that's actually a very powerful thing. It sounds silly, but it's very, very powerful because people, music is like smell, right? It's something that has a very corporal, bodily kind of impact on people. And then more broadly, I guess I was interested in the idea that radio, at least that old broadcast radio, was in, in a strange kind of way, a kind of model of time, right? Mm. Because it happened in real time, right? It's the news at 6 yeah. p.m. Now it's the news at 7 p.m., it's live, and yeah. we're gonna play uh, Frank Sinatra now, yeah. and then we're gonna play, you know, Serge Gainsbourg, et cetera, yeah. you know? Uh, and, and all that in a way, I was interested in that as a kind of, as a type of chronicle. So Gerard, it was so nice to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you.